Hello and welcome to the chapter 10 uh, lecture video on pure competition in the short run. So we're going to be talking about here um, for the rest of this term are these four different market models. Okay, So we've kind of spent the first part of the term focusing in on the consumer and the individual's uh, decision-making process, right? The, econom the economic problem and, and dealing with um, scarcity, okay? And now we're gonna shift a little bit more. We've already talked about supply and the producer, the firm that, that produces goods and services, but now we're gonna go even further and we're gonna talk about the firm's environment in a market, okay? Uh, we also could say maybe uh, for a market, uh, it, another maybe word that we could use for that could be uh, instead of market, we might say industry, you know. So, so anyways, there is going to be, there's going to be four different types that are listed here. Okay, so we got pure competition, uh, pure monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. So... Uh, for this one, we're going to talk about, for this chapter, we're going to talk about pure competition in the uh, short run. And we'll also talk about in chapter 11, we're going to talk about the long run. Okay. Uh, chapter 12, we're going to be talking about pure, pure monopoly. Okay. So pure competition is divided up into two segments. One is the short run and one is the long run. And we'll We'll talk about kind of the differences between them, but the really we need to talk about this continuum, right? So this is kind of the market continuum. So on this side, on the left side, we've got pure competition. Okay, and the opposite side, we've got pure monopoly. So the first two things we're going to talk about are kind of the, uh, the opposite side of the continuum. Uh, competition versus monopoly and uh, we're also going to talk about some of the basics, um, how some of the basic questions that the firm asks itself, and how we can answer those questions. Okay, so here's here's some examples, and this is in your book, so you can look this up. Uh, what characterizes the uh, the four market models? The one we're going to focus in on right now is pure competition. So in the pure competition, what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have a large amount of sellers, very large, okay? Very large amount of sellers. Something that, that you know, like an industry or something that usually uh, fits the best, it doesn't fit perfectly into the pure competition, is uh, agriculture, okay? The agriculture type products or commodities typically fit into the pure competition model uh, mold the best. Not perfectly. Uh, another thing is we have standardized products, so something maybe like a commodity uh, that doesn't have a lot of differentiation. Okay, we we have a, a situation, and this is the, um, the where the uh, suppliers, okay, and the consumers are for the most most part price takers. Okay, they take the price that is in the market. Whatever the market price is, the going rate, right, is going to be the situation where they have to take that price. So they have to be price takers. And and then uh, the other thing that kind of is uh, is known in pure competition is easy entry or exit. Okay, In the short run, we actually don't have any entry or exit, but in the long run, we'll talk about that. And so that, and that makes pure competition uh, kind of what it is, okay? Because if there were barriers to entry, that tends to develop more of a monopoly, okay? And barrier to exit, right? It becomes more risky to get in and stay in. Uh, you can't get out of an industry. Okay. Okay. So uh, the perfect elasticity of demand uh, is what we find in a, a competitive market. That means that the firm produces as much or as little as they wish at the market price. 
okay? And so we have, we have a situation where, so here's kind of the demand curve that I'm drawing here. So here's price over here, right? And here's our quantity down at the bottom. And then what we find is, so let's say it's $5, right? Here's $5. Let's say that's the going rate for, I don't know, a bushel of apples, okay? So that is demand in a in the short term for a purely competitive market right so this is demand and so it looks like this that means that the price is what it is it cannot change it's perfectly elastic and so the firm has to decide where along this demand curve it's going to supply right where is it going to supply at what quantity and so we we um, can answer which where's the best possible uh, quantity to supply at to get the most profit, right? Because that's really what the firm wants. Wants profit. Okay, so that's a horizontal line is the demand curve. Okay. And that's the price. And so as we as we map that out and we say, okay, here's the price, here's the quantity, and this is our demand, then we see here that price right there equals average revenue. Okay. So here, price equals average revenue, which is total revenue divided by the quantity. So um, if we have 100, let's say for example, $100 in total revenue, and the total quantity that we sell is, uh, let's say 20, right? That's gonna equal our price of five, dollars which is also uh, average revenue AR revenue per unit right so then we flip it around again and we say total revenue equals price times quantity so if we go uh, five dollars for per bushel of apple times the quantity of 20 bushels equals our total revenue of a hundred dollars right so you see kind of how that works okay and so now we have marginal revenue so marginal revenue is the extra revenue from one more unit or one more bushel, okay? And so it's gonna be the change in total revenue, right? Which is, let's say for example, we go from, uh, let's say we go from $95 to $100, right? So that's five dollars there. So that's the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. Change, that's my little change in quantity. And so that is the change in quantity, that's just gonna be one unit, right? So it's five dollars divided by one equals five dollars, which is marginal revenue. So we can line it out up here. We can say our average revenue equals our price equals our marginal revenue. So it's all equal when it comes to the short run, right, demand curve in a purely competitive market. So that, that's kind of the, one of the important things to understand. They are price takers. They have to take the price that's given. So that's the price. Okay, so we look at this. This is our total revenue curve going up here, right? Total revenue there. And then here's our demand curve or marginal revenue or uh, our average revenue, right? So, and that, that's gonna be $131 is the price per unit, okay? That we're talking about here. That's kind of how it looks graphed out. Okay, so now for, uh, for a competitive per producer, it's gonna ask three questions. And these questions are gonna be it for all different markets. So whether we're doing a monopoly, whether we're doing short run, long run, in a purely competitive market, or whether we're doing an oligopoly or a, a monopolistic competition. So all four market models are gonna have a variation, basically three questions that are gonna be kind of stemming off of these three questions. And the first question here is, okay, here's, whoops. Here's the first question, right? Question number one, is should the firm produce? Okay, and we're gonna we're I'm gonna show you how they look at average variable cost 
to answer that question, okay? So they're, we're gonna be able to answer that question using average variable cost uh, with what we already know about marginal revenue equals average revenue equals price, okay? Okay, we're gonna, we're also question number two. So question number one was should the firm produce or not produce, okay? Should it, should it produce or should it shut down, right, is basically the idea in the short run. In the short run, the, the firm cannot exit or enter the market. It can just say, I'm going to make product or I'm not going to make product, okay? It's not entering or exiting the, it's not selling its plant or equipment, those kind of things. It's just, as, am I going to use my plant or equipment or am I not? So number two is, if so, so if it does produce, uh, how much what amount and that's going to be answered by this little equation okay marginal cost equals marginal revenue so where that is true that is that tells us how much we're supposed to produce and we'll see that in a graph here in just a minute okay so now number three uh, what economic profit or loss will be realized and this is that's going to be answered by this little equation here so that's marginal revenue minus average total cost times the total product or the quantity right of output uh, another way to put this is up here right this tr minus tc so that's the same basically the same equation so it's total revenue minus total cost equals, it's either going to equal our profit or our loss uh, at wherever the amount is right here that we're going to produce. Okay. And so uh, that's, th these are, th these two down here at the bottom on number three, they're the same, basically the same equation. Right, just stated in different, using different kinds of components. Marginal revenue, average total cost, that's gonna be per unit. The one on the bottom here, total revenue, total cost, that's gonna be in totality. Uh, and so that's why we have to multiply at the end of this one right here by total output, which brings it back into total loss or total profit. All right, so here we have some data that's listed out for us. And we can easily see the maximum or the maximizing profit right here, right? That's the that's the highest profit that we see, and then it starts going down again. And so, uh, at that point, that's really where we want to produce, right? As a company, we want the most profit. So let's look here uh, and graphically at this, right? So we want to operate where total cost, which is the red right here, right? Total cost is furthest away from total revenue, okay? So this gap right here in green is the biggest gap and that's gonna give us the maximum economic profit. We can also see down here just as, as the profit is mapped out where it reaches its peak and starts heading down again, that's our maximum profit. And they these match up with a certain level or quantity of production. Okay, so now here's here's all of our uh, kind of our calculated numbers, right? So we have total cost and and all that on the previous one, uh, and total revenue. Now we have our averages and our margins. Okay, so now we're able to put some of the uh, some of the things that we've talked about before into play. And uh, the very first one is is uh, should we produce? Okay. Should we produce? And uh, the the answer to that is we're looking at marginal uh, revenue here. Here's our marginal revenue. Okay, so it, when we're looking at average variable cost, right? This is the should we produce? This is number the number one question. Should we produce or not? Okay. We're looking at average variable cost and we're saying, does marginal revenue fall below, 
Okay, if we look at the minimum average variable cost, in this one we're looking at minimum. Okay, and that's going to be right here. That's the lowest the average variable cost gets. At that point, is our marginal revenue below it? If it's below, then we do not produce. If it's above, then we do produce. And in this case, it's above. And so we say yes to number one. Okay, so we do produce. All right, and the next, the next one here I'm gonna do in red, right? So the next one I'm gonna do in red and I'm gonna say, okay, uh, now we have to say how much, right? Number, number two. Number two is how much should we produce? And the, with that one, we look at marginal cost. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That's gonna be our number two here. So we look down through these numbers and sure enough, right here is the closest that we come, right? right here on number on nine, a quantity of nine output. And so that is gonna be uh, the answer to how much, right? How much, okay? And then, then we're gonna go on to number three and let me get a different color here real quick. We'll go with green on this one. Okay, and so the green here is is then how much is the profit, right? So it tells us right here how much the profit is, okay? And, and remember, there's two ways to do this. There's two ways to do this. So we can either do marginal revenue minus average total cost times the quantity, the, the uh, level of output, okay? Okay, so that's, that's one way to do it. The other way is we can flip back to our totals and we can do total revenue minus total cost equals this profit here, okay? May not always be a profit. It may be a, a loss and I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so here are the different things graphed out. So here is our price, right? Here's our price. Marginal revenue because marginal cost. What does that tell us? That tells us how much, right? What amount? What amount? Where, what level do we produce at? And that tells us right there. Okay, here's average variable cost. There's the minimum, right? Right in here. Is marginal revenue below or above? It's above, so the answer is do we produce? And the answer is yes, we produce. Okay, because it's above. And here's average total cost. And let's let's look at the map. I, li I like how it does this. It actually tells us uh, graphically what the profit looks like right here in green. So we take this gap here between marginal revenue and average total cost, and we multiply it out by the amount, and that total area under that profit basically tells us what the profit is gonna be. Okay, so, so like I said, it may not always be a profit. So there comes a situation in, so that, that was the scenario that said this is uh, what the profit is, okay? It's pretty straightforward, we answered our three questions. Now we're gonna say, what, what, if, what if we don't actually make a profit, but we're able to minimize our loss, okay? So kind of the way that works is we have a bunch of fixed costs, right? So here's a bunch of our fixed costs here, okay? They cost, oh, let's say, I don't know, let's say $1,000, uh, but we're not, we're not able to break even, but we can maybe, let's say we can earn up to this level right here, right? So let's say we can earn up to $800, uh, but we can't earn the 1,000. So we actually lose 200, right? Does that make sense? So we don't lose the whole 1,000 by not operating, right? That's really our question is, do we produce or not? Uh, if average variable cost, right, depending on the minimum average variable cost, 
If we're able to have a marginal revenue above that, then we can at least eat away at the fixed cost. If we're below any level, the minimum level of average variable cost, we're going to be losing variable cost and fixed cost. So we don't want to do that. So, so this is that's kind of the setup, right? And so we have our graph here. Okay, here's our marginal revenue. Our price has changed, if you noticed, right? Here's our price. We're price takers, so we can't make the price. Here's our marginal cost, marginal revenue. This tells us how much, right? That's number one, okay? Number one, or not, that's actually number two, huh? That's how we listed it. We listed it as number two. So that's, oh, you can answer that as number one as well, but so, so that just tells us how much, right? So here's our average variable cost. Okay, so are we above average variable cost? Yes. So do we produce? Yes, we produce, right? And then the very last one, what's our profit or our loss? Well, guess what? Marginal revenue is below average total cost. So this gap in here, right here, is going to be the loss. We wouldn't have lost uh, we would have lost more. We would have lost more if we just didn't produce at all. Okay, so that's loss minimization. Now here's shutdown. Here's where you know what we we can't even uh, we can't even pay for our variable cost, uh, let alone our fixed cost. So we're not even going to operate. We're going to actually just we're just going to shut down. Okay, so our price is lower here. We see we're now we're down to 71 here. There's our marginal cost, marginal revenue. So if we did produce, we would produce right around here, right? That's if we did produce. But we see with our average variable cost, we're below at all points. So do we produce in this case? And the answer is no, we do not produce. We do not produce. Average total cost is there and so if we did produce we'd lose a bunch of more money than than uh, if we just stayed shut down right so there's there's our shutdown case okay so so anyways so that's that's the basic idea of uh, the um, the short run okay for for the uh, and the three main questions that we answer we can look at it in a in a, a schedule kind of like this one right or we can look at it in a situation where we look at graphically kind of how, how it looks it helps us both ways so anyways hopefully this helps you and we'll talk to you later bye